Hi, I'm Rob Shore, Director of Product Marketing for Corient. In this video, what I want to do is take a look, a little bit closer look at SDN, right? Get a better understanding of what SDN is, what it can provide for the network, and then how Corient uses these capabilities and interweaves them uh, with this flexible infrastructure that we can create uh, to create a pretty inter an innovative solution that we call the Corient Dynamic Optical Cloud. So if you remember from previous videos, we took a closer look at this universal transport infrastructure that Corey can provide. This is an infrastructure now where you can dial in exactly the kind of functionality you want all the way through the network and then change that and adapt the way the network is managing traffic over time flexibly. But this is the infrastructure itself. And infrastructures, they're really just tools. This is the tool that the service provider can then use to provide their services. But like any tool, a tool is ever only as good as your ability to use it. And today what we have is tools, these network infrastructures, uh, that are run by these management systems, right? These NMSs provided by the vendors. And that causes a couple limitations, right? Most of these management systems, they really only enable you to provide static connectivity. You can provision a circuit, and if you want a different type of service through the network, you have to deprovision or reprovision or provision something new, and that, that ends up being reasonably static. On top of that, these NMSs really are only able to do what the vendor who created them uh, allows you to do. If you want to do something different, uh, you really have to go back to the vendor and ask for those new features to be added to that management system. So that's the idea is these uh, traditional management systems, they really limit what you can do uh, with these very flexible tools. And this is where SDN comes into play. SDN essentially becomes the master carpenter uh, for this flexible tool. Right? It can use this tool to much more flexibly and dynamically and customizably uh, use this tool. Uh, but it does go both ways, right? A flexible tool is only as good as your ability to use it, but so is a master carpenter's. His ability to create a house or service uh, is only as good as the tools that he has. So these two things really go hand in hand. Okay? But let's take a closer look at SDN, what it is, where it came from, and what it can do for transport networks. If we look at the history of SDN, where it really evolved, it really evolved in the data centers. Uh, and this is why. You have these data center resources, right? These, these servers that these data center operators are managing. And they want to maximize their utilization of them. And they run as many applications as they can on each server. But of course, applications are going to require more and less resources over time. So what they've done is they've created these software packages, right, controllers and orchestrators, that will monitor these servers, identify when there's a resource issue, uh, identify a new location that can support this increased resource requirements, and then coordinate the move of that application to that new location. And what the SDN controller's role is in this activity is really to provide all of the connectivity required for this move. And that's connectivity not only to move the application to the new server, but also to restore the connectivity of everybody that was talking to that application, both the subscribers as well as all the storage devices, and restore those connectivities. And that's what the controller, the SDN controller, is doing inside the data center. Now, this is nice for us in the transport world, because what's happened is these SDN controllers, they're already pretty well established, right? They've been used in these data centers for quite a bit of time, and they've already been pretty well proven. So by the time we go to introduce these into the transport network, we can leverage some of the experience and some of the maturity of these types of applications from the data center. So let's look at how this now is evolving into the transport network. Again, we have these individual data centers with these orchestrators and controllers operating in them. Uh, and that was just managing traffic inside one individual data center, managing the applications. But now we're having a situation where these application operators, these data center operators, they really want to start moving applications from one data center to another. And there's a lot of reasons for that, either from straight resources or, or even from some strategies like one called follow the sun, right, where they want to keep moving the applications to a data center center that has sunlight to save on power, right? These can be solar powered or solar enhanced uh, data centers, and they can keep moving those applications, uh, right, to minimize their actual power requirements. So of course, to do that, initially, you'll need this higher layer controller that's going to coordinate between these different uh, data center specific controllers. But when I want to start moving applications for whatever reason from one data center to the next, they of course are going to be going through the transport network. And one of the limitations of these controllers is they can establish connectivity inside the data center, but they don't really know anything about, nor they can, can they create the connectivity in the transport network. So this is where the transport controllers can help come into play. 
right? The idea is that these data center controllers can talk to the transport controllers, figure out not only where there is connectivity, but when new connectivity is required, they can coordinate that to establish that connectivity to move those applications and restore the connections to those applications. Now, of course, the transport controller has to operate on all layers of the transport network. So you're going to be packet, OT, and optical layer. But it can do that now, and it can establish these connections, and not only establish the connections, but ensure uh, that it's using their resources in the transport network in the most efficient way possible. Okay. Now, of course, transport networks aren't just a single network. There's often multiple transport networks, different metros, long-haul networks. And a lot of times, there's different vendors associated with those different parts of the transport network. So you might end up with different domain controllers for each of these different vendors. But the key idea is you want to tie all of those together so that you can really create these end-to-end -end solutions. Now, again, we can leverage some of the experience from these data center-based controllers that already have to operate in multi-vendor environments. So we're going to have this controller architecture here. Then, of course, you're going to be able to layer applications on top of that. More on that in a second. And then you'll have the coordination between the data center controllers uh, and the network controllers or network orchestrators. Then, of course, there's all these protocols. Uh, there's all these protocols that you need uh, to govern the communication uh, between all these different layers. Right? And again, uh, we can go into more details of that in another session. But the idea is that there's these protocols be being designed to try to make sure uh, that these interfaces stay open so that you can have as many different uh, vendors uh, and across as many different layers as possible. So this is the nature uh, of SDN. Okay? Now what we want to do is take a look at some of the applications. Right? What, if, what can this provide for transport networks? So again, if we look at a, a typical transport network with all the different potential connectivity options, uh, one of the most uh, primary applications, one of the most primary uses that SDN can provide uh, is just bandwidth connectivity, right? Creating services. But what it can do now is you can create much more customizable connectivity in the network, right? I can customize it based on uh, individual subscribers and a whole bunch of new different types of parameters. So much more flexible, customizable connectivity. But it isn't just connectivity that users provision, right? It's not just bandwidth on demand requested by a user. It can also work in conjunction with these machine to machine connections, right? Where this data center might want to move an application from one data center to another data center, and it can request a connection from the transport controller, establish that connection, create that connectivity, and then move that application uh, to the other data center, right? So now you have machine to machine connectivity requests. So this is just on service creation. There's a couple other interesting applications, one of which is something called defragmentation. When these services are originally established, right, they take the best, most efficient path possible in general. But the fact is, is that transport networks in particular, the topology changes over time. You establish new connectivity options in the network. And over time, you find that a lot of these connections uh, are not taking the most uh, efficient route possible of the day, right? And of course, we all know how often service providers go back and audit these networks and realign all their traffic, right? Virtually never. But this is something that SDN can do, right? It can audit the network, analyze all the current connections in the network, determine if they're taking the most optimal path, uh, and then reprovisioning them, reconnecting them to better utilize the resources in the network, right? By doing this, I just freed up these resources on that part of the network. So that's defragmentation. Uh, another interesting application is restoration. Yes, restoration exists today, of course. But what SDN can do is enable you to provide much more customizable restoration, right? a much more wider variety uh, of, of parameters, right? SLA, latency, path, all kinds of different uh, options. And really, the key is that they can be customizable on exactly the kind of restoration that you want to provide. Now, the last one is something that's really, in my opinion, probably the most interesting part about this, right? Uh, this is this dynamic type services. And if I look at a typical application, maybe I've got a customer here that needs connectivity between those two locations. And if they look at their traffic patterns, they use on average one gig, right? 90% of the time, they only need one gig. But 10% of the time, their bandwidth peaks up to three gig. So because they don't want to diminish their service ever, that customer will probably end up buying a three gig private line service, right? They'll be paying for three gig of dedicated bandwidth uh, through the network, even though 90% of the time they're only using one gig of that. Now that's bad for the customer, and it's also bad for the service provider. The customer's paying for bandwidth he's not using most of the time. And the service provider is now forced to provide that bandwidth in their network and reserve that bandwidth, even though it's mostly not being used. 
Well, what SDN can do is it can actually coordinate between all these different layers, right, these routers that are trying to talk together, and the transport network, and it can monitor exactly how much bandwidth is required at any given time, and it can adjust the amount of connectivity it's creating through the network based on the actual utilization. So this service provider running SDN on this network, they can actually go to that customer and sell them, uh, let's say, a flexi rate service, right, that says, hey, listen, you're going to pay a little bit more per gig E, but I'm only going to charge you for the bandwidth you're actually using. And now I'm going to monitor your connection to the network between this router and the network. And as it requires more bandwidth, I'm going to dynamically and automatically provision that bandwidth through my network. This is a win-win for everybody. The service provider uh, right, is going to be able to use that bandwidth that was otherwise dedicated to that customer for other purposes. And the end customer is only going to be paying uh, for the bandwidth they need. Now, and also the service provider will get more per bit of bandwidth in their network. They're getting a better price and they're using their bandwidth more efficiently and the end customer is paying less on average. So now this is just a series of applications in the network, a series of potential applications that we're integrating into Corian's trans Transcend uh, SDN solution. Okay? But really, if you look at all those applications, there's really nothing that they're doing none of those applications that you couldn't have done with a control plane. If you've been in this industry long enough, you probably remember uh, control planes. They've been around for 20 or 30 years, and they provide a lot of this automated type capabilities. So I found myself asking the question of, uh, what's the difference, right? If control plane could potentially do all of those capabilities, what's the difference between this newer SDN solution and this traditional control plane type solution? And really, I found the best way to explain the difference is really by looking at some of smartphones, right? I take a, I compare a BlackBerry, right? I think of traditional control planes as like a BlackBerry. I look at SDN as more like an Android smartphone. And, and I remember I had a BlackBerry. I'm sure most people had Blackberries. And I remember when I had my BlackBerry, my fr friend came to me for the first time with his iPhone. And I remember looking at that iPhone thinking, what's, what's with that iPhone? I mean, email, I do email, text messages, phone calls, web surfing. I can do all that with my BlackBerry. I even have a keyboard. I'm like, that iPhone doesn't even have a keyboard. I'm like, Psh, that iPhone, that'll never take off. Right? Obviously, I wasn't particularly accurate on that one. But what was the difference? Right? Why did the iPhone really win that battle between the two? It wasn't these applications. The real benefit that the iPhone had uh, was the ability to install new applications, to customize the way the phone operated. And not just the way the phone operated, but fundamentally the way I interacted with the phone. And now, of course, Android phones have taken it to the next level, where iOS, where Apple only operates on Apple hardware, Android iOS operates on pretty much anybody's hardware. And this is really the idea of SDN, right? The real power of SDN, when people ask me, what's the killer app for SDN? The answer is the same as probably the killer app was when the iPhone came out. The killer app for the iPhone, just like the killer app for SDN uh, when it first came out, it was the one that wasn't invented yet. The real killer app for SDN is the ability to write apps. What this is going to enable service providers to do is to customize, again, not only the way the network interfaces, the network operates, uh, but the way you interface with the, with the network, and to customize a variety of different applications for different functions. I can create an app to work with my provisioning team, an app to work with my operations team. I can create separate apps for different individual enterprise customers that gives them each a unique and different experience when they're interfacing with my network. Really, I think the future of these networks and how service providers are really going to compete and differentiate themselves over time is going to be to both build this extremely flexible tool that SDN can operate on, and then it's going to really come down to who builds which applications to really differentiate and create these very truly dynamic and innovative service offerings. So this is the concept of SDN. And what we're really doing at Corient, right, is weaving these co concepts, right, these powerful, flexible, customizable concepts of SDN uh, with our flexible infrastructure and, and really focused on a way that we can leverage these transport solutions to really create overall improved end-to-end -end networking solutions where we can leverage the transport infrastructure uh, to really enhance all aspects of the network. And again, we start with this very flexible tool, right? You need an infrastructure that's capable of being manipulated, right? And that in includes these uh, universal type switching, this integrated optical, flexible optical layer, but it also includes this SDN, right? This powerful controlling mechanism that you can customize and program it to uh, maximize the utilization and efficiency of this tool. And it's really the combination of those two, the interweaving of those two, uh, that we are calling the dynamic optical cloud, creating this overall more dynamic solution that enables you to use your network more efficiently, that enables you to provide new and inno more innovative type solutions.
Okay? So this brings us to the end of this session. Hopefully it gives you a bit of a better understanding about what SDN is and what it can accomplish uh, and how you can interweave SDN into these flexible infrastructure solutions uh, to create end-to-end -end overall transport solutions to improve uh, all aspects of your business, such as we've done with the Corient Dynamic Optical Cloud. For more information on any of these things, including Corient's Transcend SDN solution or Corient's Universal Infrastructure solutions, please visit us at corient.com. I hope you found this session interesting, and uh, thank you for watching.